Hey moms, Sarah here, and I am excited to share a talk with you that I have put together called In Jesus' Name. And um, I want to go back a little bit to when I was little, and I grew up in a Christian home. My parents um, were Christians, so I remember growing up, I would pray after meals, or we'd pray after bedtime, and you know, we had these set times where we'd pray. And after we'd finish our prayer, we'd always say at the end, in Jesus' name, amen. We'd always say that every time without fail. And, you know, never really thought about what that meant. I, I just kind of did it. Have you ever thought about it? Like, I would assume that most of us pray that way. Lord, help me, blah, blah, blah. In Jesus' name, amen. But have we ever really thought what does that mean? Well, today I'm going to share with you a few personal stories about the power of speaking Jesus' name. But before I get into them, I want to talk about Jesus' actual name and what does it mean. So transliterated from Hebrew and Aramaic, Jesus' name is actually Yeshua. This word is a combination, right, of two parts. The first part is Yah, which is an abbreviation for Yahweh. And that is the name of Israel's God, Exodus 3.14. And then there's the verb yasha, which means to rescue or deliver, save. So if you take those two together and you connect them, Jesus' name actually means the God who saves. I love that uh, description because doesn't that really encapsulate everything of who Jesus really is? I mean, think about all the ways that Jesus saves us. I mean, if you would have asked me when I was little, how does Jesus save you? I would have said, he saves me from my sins. And when I die, he saves me from death and I'll go to heaven. And that was the foundation of what I believed. And I still believe that 100%, but he also saves us every single day. He saves us from death, right? But he also saves us from sickness. He saves us from disaster because he protects us when disastrous things happen. Um, he saves us from fear, fear of like circumstances or fear of what, do, what do other people think. He even saves us, you guys, from ourselves because sometimes we just need a little saving. <laughs> Have you ever been in an accident or some sort of like quick thing that might have happened and you, you're like, Oh my goodness, I think Jesus just saved my life right there. I mean, I'm sure there had to be an angel right there, right at that time. You know, this doesn't mean that we don't go through hard times, right? But it does mean that when we do go through those times and those trials, Jesus saves us from them so that we're not destroyed. Think of that scripture from Isaiah 43, verse 2. It says, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. So it does talk about how we're going to go through hard times. We're going to go through fires, through rivers. These things will happen, but we're not going to be destroyed, right? Jesus promises to save us when we're going through them. You know, I know this applies a lot to big things like cancer or a national disaster, but I'm telling you what, they also apply to smaller things like the dentist, all right? I have a son who loves the dentist, not. <laughs> he does not like the dentist at all. When he was little and we knew we had to take him in, he was so scared, you guys. He literally would not open his mouth. We weren't even going to do anything. All he had to do was sit in the chair and open his mouth and he would have none of it. So then we're like, okay, he's young, we'll wait a little bit. And then a little longer, we tried again, screaming, crying, meltdown. I'm like, we're not hurting you. We're just asking you to open your mouth. Okay, so years, well, I'm not sure if it was years, but a little while later, we tried again. Now we got him into the dentist, found out he has cavities. We're like, what are we gonna do? He did get one filling. But I'm telling you, they had to give him gas. And let me tell you, after that time, he will never get a filling again because they tried, they, they did everything. These poor dentists, I just bless them. So anyway, as a mom who already had some of her own fear of the dentist from when I was little, just being honest, I was traumatized taking him to the dentist. And I, I'm like, 
this this isn't working. The dentist would pull me aside and she's like, he's got to get these fillings filled at some point. So we're probably, you're probably going to have to take him and put him under just so he can get fillings. I'm like, I'm done. Like, it's all over. I really was totally a mess. Okay, those are really hard days, right? But now, let me tell you what, years later, he's doing great. He gets his teeth work done. He literally sits through Novocaine and fillings. We never had to put him under. It literally, you guys, feels like a miracle to me. So all of that to say, Jesus' name means the God who saves. He saves us from sin, and he saves us from disasters at the dentist. <laughs> You know, I love the meaning of Jesus' name, but I also love the power that comes with his name. Listen to some of these scriptures. John 14, 13 says, And I will do whatever you ask in my name. This is Jesus talking. I'll do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. So he's saying, ask me. I want you to ask me, but don't just ask me. Ask me in my name. And you know what's interesting? When he says that, he also says, so that the Son may glorify the Father. So the whole point of this is so that God the Father will be glorified. So one of the reasons I love to use Jesus' name when I pray is because it literally glorifies God. Here's another scripture. It's from Philippians 2, 10 through 11. And it says that at the name of Jesus the name. Every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. There's that glorifying God part again, right? It's all about bringing God glory. Plus, I love this because it says everything bows to Jesus' name. That's everything. So I'm talking sickness, I'm talking disease, I'm talking people, I'm talking the world, I'm talking creation, Everything will bow to Jesus' name. It makes me think of that song, Jesus over everything, right? It says he reigns forevermore. And then it gets into this really fun part where it says over fear, over shame, right? Over all anxiety, his name reigns over it all. I want to tell you the story about my dad this past summer. Um, he had this bag of dirt and he realized that there was this bag of dirt. It was kind of old and he wanted to use it to do some potting or planting. I wasn't around when this happened, but this is the story that I was told. So he decided that he was going to dump out this old bag of dirt and it had a hole in it. It was pretty old. So he dumped it out. Well, little did he know that there was a nice wasp's nest in the bag of dirt. So when he dumped it out, what happened? It really upset the wasp's nest and they went crazy and they started literally attacking my dad. And so he was being stung by all these wasps. He was trying to get away from them. He was trying to get them off of them, off of him. And they kept attacking him, you guys. So in his panic, and he couldn't get rid of these wasps, he couldn't get away from them. What did he do? He came into the house because he thought, well, I'll just get in the shower and then I'll spray them off of me and just get them off. So that's what he did. He came inside. He went into the shower. Well, what do you think happened to some of the wasps, right? They were still in the house. Now, I want you to know my kids and my parents were in the house at this time. And Caleb, my son, 11-year-old son, had made sure that Ellie was in her bedroom and the door was closed. And then he came into the kitchen where my mom was knowing that she had to kill some of these wasps, which totally terrified her. There Caleb was in the corner, and he was standing there in the corner. He too is deathly afraid of wasps, but he's in the corner. And as my mom is trying to kill these wasps, this is what he's saying over and over again. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. He's speaking the name of Jesus while my mom killed those wasps. Now, not only did that bring her comfort and strength, but I really believe that while Caleb was praying, God moved through that prayer and protected my mom because, you guys, she didn't get stung. Isn't that a beautiful picture of the power and presence of speaking Jesus' name? I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've been scared about something and all I know how to say and do is Jesus' name because I just, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. Like, 
mainly this happens in car rides, let's just be honest. And my kids have heard me many times just say, Jesus, 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 while we're driving. There is power in the name of Jesus. And mamas, I'm telling you, when your kids are little or even when they're all grown up, you are an example to them. And I encourage you, use the mighty name of Jesus whenever you can. Don't just talk about the power of Jesus' name. Say it. Pray it and declare it. Why? Because they will do what you do. Amen? You know, the Bible gives us incredible examples of the power of Jesus' name. Uh, Luke 10, 17 says, The 72 returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. So right here, we even hear that the power of Jesus' name is able to have power over demons and demonic strongholds. That's huge. That's huge. Mark 16, 17 says, And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes with their hands. And when they drink deadly poison, it's not going to hurt them at all. They will place their hands on sick people and they will get well. I mean, can we just unpack that for a minute? The power of Jesus' name drives out demons, you guys. It can give believers a spiritual language that's not their native tongue. It can provide supernatural protection. And it can make sick people miraculously healed and whole. This is power. So let me ask you this. Do we live our lives in this way where we actually believe this and that our kids would believe it too? I mean, do we pray in Jesus' name with that type of conviction? Think about this question. When was the last time you encountered a situation that was so intense and so overwhelming and you were just totally in over your head and your response was not to go eat a piece of cake or complain to a girlfriend, but instead it was to declare the name of Jesus over it. This past year, uh, Josh and I went to Mexico City for a conference. We stayed in this beautiful hotel and we were on the 31st floor and um, it was lovely. We were there for about a week and there was this one night when we were sleeping. It was about 1.30 in the morning. Josh woke up because he heard this noise upstairs and he was like, why are people moving furniture upstairs? So he got out of bed because, you know, he's like, I don't know what's going on. He's up. And when he gets out of bed, you guys, this is what he does. And he tries to catch his balance. Immediately, he realizes what's happening. People aren't moving furniture. We're in an earthquake. Now, you guys, I didn't even wake up, okay? I wasn't, I was sleeping. I didn't even know what was going on. But all I remember is two things. Number one, I remember while I was sleeping and thinking, something is wrong. And I remember while I was sleeping in my subconscious, all I remember doing was saying, Jesus, 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 over and over in my head. And the second thing that I remember is I remember the loud announcement that was saying, everything is all right. You may all go back to the original things that you were doing over and over and over again, which actually was a thing that literally woke me up. So now I don't know how much my Jesus prayer made a difference in that earthquake, but you know what? I don't care. I don't need to know. I was just excited, you guys, that I was praying in my sleep. <laughs> so let me just remind all of us again that Jesus' name is powerful. Saying the name of Jesus is powerful. So the next time you're at the table, okay, and you're praying over your food with your kids and your family, and you end your prayer in Jesus' name, I just want to give you a little nugget of like table topic conversation. I want to encourage you to have a family conversation while you eat and talk about why we actually pray in Jesus' name. Because why do we? Well, from what I've learned so far and I've just shared with you, it's really three things. Number one, it's because Jesus told us to. Number two, it does glorify God. And number three, there is real power in the name of Jesus.